In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. A hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you. Quite a number have asked. I had a small fall, and therefore there's a little uh, tiny fracture there, and I've got a cast. I'll be absolutely okay. Thank you so much for your prayers. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist once again. Uh, we are on the 12th week on a Tuesday. Today is the feast of St. Thomas More and John Fisher, who, and also Pauline of Nola, many saints today. Uh, we begin this Eucharist putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may conform by witness of life the faith that we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you sit? Reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possession was so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land, then Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. 
Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley, and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northwards and southwards, and eastwards and westwards. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring can also be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, O Lord, who may abide in your tent altogether? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Whoever walks without fault, who does what is just, and speaks the truth from his heart, whoever does not slander with his tongue. Our response, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who does no wrong to a neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord? Our response, O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who lends no money at interest, but accepts no bribe against the innocent, such a one shall never be shaken. Our response, O Lord, who may abide in your tent. Kindly stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give dogs what is holy. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter it are many, for the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. Those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue the readings of uh, Abraham, and it's so beautiful, uh, it's very human. Uh, Abraham is told by God to go and find a new land, and God told him that. Uh, Yahweh told him, all that land be yours, your children will be uh, countless and so many, uh, etc. Promised him prosperity, that was a sign of prosperity. So he takes his wife, we heard yesterday, takes his wife and be his uh, nephew and they go to a far off land. And there's prosperity, he has money, he has cattle, but uh, his nephew's uh, workers and Abraham's workers began fighting. They could not agree. And so Abraham also realizes that uh, uh, there is so much land over here. So he is so kind, he trusts the Lord, and he tells the uh, Lord, 
says that we can't stay together. You go one side, I'll go one side. And he gives Lot the chance to uh, choose which side he wants to go. And uh, Abraham chooses one. Lot chooses the better side. The jaw lots of water over there. Abraham says, okay, I'll go the other side. Didn't bother. He just trusted in the Lord. Didn't try to make calculations and see what happens. Uh, ultimately, that area was where Sodom, Gomorrah was there, which God destroyed. And they had difficulties, which Lot had chosen. But uh, it was just trust in the Lord. It's showing us trust in the Lord, complete obedience to him, confidence in him, faith in him, really uh, finally results in success and good things. We'll carry on. Uh, the, we'll re continue this uh, Genesis uh, for three weeks. We'll be hearing from this first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. I mentioned to you first 11 chapters on creation. And then now from 12 onwards, which we now we're reading, is about Abraham, the formation of Israel, preparation for Jesus. And Jesus comes and he gives today, we hear lots of things, but I want to take just one line, which is such a key line in the whole gospel passage. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. This is the law and the prophets. This is what God is telling you. He said the law is really the time of Jesus. The law was meant the first five books of the uh, uh, whole Bible, including Genesis. The common teaching of all the leaders, the most popular or the leading rabbi at the time when Jesus was a child, was, it, was growing up, was Rabbi Hillel. And uh, he was known to be a kind and gracious man, teaching people lots of good things, etc. And uh, uh, he would tell people, it's, of, it's quoted, that whatever is hateful to you, do not do unto your neighbor. This is the law. The rest is commentary. Go and learn this. This was really a saying that was attributed to him. Uh, whatever is hateful to you, do not do to others. This is the law. Rest is commentary. Really, that, that really sums up the law, uh, what Hillel said. Whatever is hateful, whatever you don't like others do to, uh, what you don't like others to do to you, don't do to us. I want to point out to you, brothers and sisters, that this is a negative thing. What Jesus has said in the gospel is positive. Don't do what is, avoid what is hateful to you. It is, is a high level of spirituality. Don't, therefore, don't hurt others. Don't pain others. Don't, be inju don't do injustice to others. But Jesus goes up higher, much higher. And later on, he'll go even higher still. Uh, here he says, whatever you wish others would do to you, do to them. What you positively, not don't avoid, but what you want others to, others you would like. Let me give by examples. Uh, you certainly would not like anybody to be unjust to you, cheat you, hurt you, pain you. That's Hillel's law. Jesus says what you like to be done, what you want others to do. You want others to be kind to you, to help you in difficulty, uh, to make sure that you're not suffering, not lonely, uh, positively going out to reach to you in love. That's the thing. Jesus wants us to, Jesus is teaching us the meaning of love. He's Without using the word here, he's teaching the meaning of love. And that's really uh, the meaning, the essence of Christianity. And uh, I want you to reflect on that in our, in our spiritual journey. We are trying to be holy, wanting to be holy, wanting to understand what the Lord wants of us. It's uh, something that we must therefore reflect on daily. Am I doing what, uh, am I behaving towards others as I would have liked to, others to behave to me? None of us can say we do that to the full. I want to point out to you later on, when once Jesus is going to his death, he'll say, he'll tell his disciples, his close disciples, love one another as I have loved you. That is even higher. He has even given his life for us. Uh, that's the extreme. But right now he tells us, uh, do unto others as you would have others do to you. Do not question of negatively, but positively. Let's reflect. See what it means to us in practice, what it asks of us to be as disciples of Jesus. Uh, in our lives, we understand the gospel, but we also live the gospel. Before I end these few reflections, I want to again uh, mention about uh, the saint of today, saints of today, also as Paulinus of Nola, but I thought uh, uh, John Fisher and Thomas More 
are a bit connected to many of us who are who know a little bit of England, etc., and the history. Now, both of them were executed by uh, Henry VIII. Today is the anniversary of, uh, I think it was uh, 1535. Uh, today, uh, John Fisher was uh, executed 22nd of June because he refused to accept that the king, King Henry VIII, was the head of the church. He was uh, very educated. He was Bishop of Rochester in England. He was uh, much respected, uh, consulted by the king, and one of his close advisors, he was before the Chancellor of the University of Cambridge. He wrote many books against heretics, and uh, much known. But he told when uh, the whole problem was uh, Henry uh, wanted to divorce his wife and marry another, and uh, the John Fisher said, you can't do that. So then he says, I, I am the head of the church. What, who is the pope to say it? I am the head of the church. And he broke off from Rome. And Fisher opposed him. And he, he, he tried his best to persuade him to accept. But Fisher said, that would go against my faith, my conscience. And then he went Thomas More, who was a lay person. And he was even closer to the king. Much respected, much educated, uh, very cultured and uh, tremendous esteem of the people and he supported the king a lot but when the king broke off from rome from the pope he said this is not the mind of christ uh, this is this cannot be i can't accept it the king they said tried a lot to persuade him put him in the tower of london tried to bribe him tried to uh, get him to change his mind he refused and finally he was uh, executed also a few days after uh, John Fisher was and uh, they say he had a, a typical English humor was joking with his uh, uh, executioners even as he was walking towards uh, wherever he, had, he was to be executed uh, he again reminding us of the apostles time they were all joyful when they went to their death and so was they say Thomas More and he, he proclaimed at the end as he was being executed I am a loyal subject of the king but first of God. I'm a loyal subject of the King, but first of God. And today we remember him and we ask God to help us to live as the Gospels want us. God bless you. And anybody has Thomas More, John Fisher as your, as your patrons, happy feast to you. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. the mystery of this water and wine, if we come to share in his divinity, humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is to be right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, John Fisher, Thomas More, poured out like Christ's, to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power. On the feeble you bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. 
So with the powers in heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. Before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this blood, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Jane John Fisher, Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, if you may merit to be cursed on a life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence of the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress. Wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lord, 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Do only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs, Fisher, Moe, have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks. God bless you. And uh, thank you once again for your lots of get well messages. It's not bad. It's a little un un uncomfortable and a little weighty. That's why I don't lift it up too much. I hope you don't mind. I don't wear the mitre because of that. Uh, I'll wear it after some time. Keep well and, and pray. we'll pray for each other. Uh, we are going to have a catechesis this evening. Uh, Father Nigel will give. Nigel, our communications director. God bless you and keep, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.